We're going auto focus. It's risky, but we're going to take a chance. I'm Joshua Bardwell. You're going to learn something today. This is Sam Pankratz. <laughs> <laughs> this is Sam Pankratz. And Sam is uniquely qualified to help with today's video because you are studying aerospace engineering and, and I fly RC airplanes. That's right. And, uh, I called on Sam because a long, long time ago, I did a video about these. That's DJI Goggles RE. I reviewed them. You can check the review out down in the video description if you want to learn more about the DJI Goggles RE. But there was one feature of the DJI Goggles RE that I did not review. The DJI Goggles RE used the OcuSync digital video transmission system for long range digital video like DJI, you know, you go miles and miles with DJI systems. Well, you can just stick that in anything like this old flying wing here. Um, this is a Thier flying wing. Thank you Thier for sending this to me almost a year ago. And another thing that OcuSync can do is it can do buddy box pass through. What that means is that you take your transmitter like this here old AT9S from Radiolink you run the buddy box cable into the goggles and then it passes the control channels digitally over the long distance digital video link to your plane and it just outputs S bus as if the, the, the OcuSync was your receiver and uh, then you can fly. It's like a long distance control link just like uh, Crossfire. So that's what we're doing today. So we've got the ESC over here. This is a D-Shot capable ESC, which we're using. This is the MaTeC Wing F405 flight controller. Yeah. And then we've got, of course, the DJI OcuSync module mm -hmm. with the antennas, and that has everything else in it. And then the camera out here and some nose weight. And the DJI OcuSync is both our video uh, transmitter and our receiver. It is. In this case, it's doing the S-Bus output. And it's with this camera, it has to use this high def camera. Um, so we're going to see some awesome high def. There's no GoPro on this. That Maytech flight controller is great. It's got servo. It's got tons of servo outputs, and it's got a great big uh, voltage regulator to run the servos off of. So that's that's why that's uniquely suited. We've got these antennas here, right? And of course, we've got our GPS and compass over here. So that latency doesn't look painfully bad. So the latency doesn't look bad when you move it on the ground, but in the air it's noticeable, especially as someone who flies airplanes, FPV planes, quads regularly. Yeah. It's noticeable. And by noticeable, do you mean terrifying? A little bit. It makes you scared of being anywhere near the ground. <laughs> Otherwise, you may be a lot closer to the ground than you expect. Has it got the GPS lock? So it doesn't right now. Let's put it out under the sky. These lights should be flashing, should be green when it gets GPS. So we're running iNav on this because iNav has much, much better support for servos than Betaflight. Betaflight can be made to work with servos, but it's an enormous pain in the ass. Whereas iNav, it's relatively easy-ish. Um, but um, iNav is right now set to not arm until it has GPS lock. Uh, we don't have a laptop with us to change that, so we're going to wait for it to get GPS lock. So is those LEDs, are those those programmable LEDs came with the Thier wing, I remember. They did. But you've got them hooked up. It's just a generic programmable LED strip, right? You've got them hooked up to iNav to do all the fancy schmancy. Exactly. Just indicators. like Queen Flight and Betaflight both have, they're programmable, addressable LEDs. Yeah. So you can have all kinds of colors and functionality right there at your yeah. fingertips. That's cool. They came with the wing, but I was like, oh, well, isn't that nice? But I probably will never use that. One of the limitations of high definition digital systems like this is that they are not able to use the built in OSD in our flight controllers because the, the digital camera system, it just doesn't work with the flight controller. It's designed for an analog camera system. And that's OK, because like a lot of times the digital system will have basic OSD functionality like voltage monitoring and so forth. But in a case like this, where we're having trouble getting it to arm, you really feel that because in the beta flight or the iNav OSD, you can see the arming refusal reason. When it refuses to arm, it'll tell you in the OSD. And we just have no way of seeing that. We're just not using that camera system. If you were going to build one of these rigs, you would it you could theoretically put a 5 gigahertz video transmitter on there 
and use it only for diagnostics or like redundancy. I don't know. I mean, that'd probably be overkill and not worth it, but hey, we're just going to screw with this until we get it to arm. Okay. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> That was a terrible launch. Sorry about that. I saw what happened after I launched uh -oh. it. Fix the back, please. What? The back of the goggles? Okay. I feel like I pulled that launch a little bit. All right, Sam. So, talk to us about the flight experience. How is the flight experience? So, it's really cool flying from HD. I, I don't get this opportunity much. So, the video is very clear. The lag is definitely there. I, I can feel it, and it's noticeable, especially in proximity. So I'm going to try and fly by right now. Honestly, it's not, it's not too bad. I would say this is flyable. When does it get sketchy? When you get close to the ground, you definitely notice it. If and you had, If you had to estimate the lag, how, how much would you say it is? I would say it's at least three quarters of a second. Oof. That's, a half second. That's a lot. It's like, you know, you move the stick, boom, boom, it moves. Boom, 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 boom. Now, we don't have a GPS working right this minute um, because you guys on the video won't see this because we, had, we couldn't get it to arm with GPS for some reason. We just disabled it. So we're not going to want to do a super range test. Have you got RSSI indicator on there? Uh, I have connection. There's a few bars on here. Yeah, so we could probably fly it out a little bit and see if it was getting sketchy. Oh yeah, all right, I'll go out a little bit. The park is pretty empty today. I feel pretty safe about pushing it a little bit. And I do want to be conscious of the battery. We are, this isn't a very efficient setup, mm -hmm. and it is a 2200 four cell battery, so probably in about four minutes or so, we I want to come back. We have VBAT monitoring? We do not. We couldn't get telemetry working. Yeah, so with that I'm still getting signal pretty far out here. I would say this has the traditional long-range DJI capabilities that the, the right? Mavic and the Phantom have. Right now, I can see where you are. We're, we have no problem going that far on like a 600 or 800 milliwatt. No problem. You're not mm. that far out, to be honest. Yeah, I just don't want to fly over the water you're that's over really, here. You're maybe a kilometer out. Maybe. I would guess. But it's, little, now you're starting to get a little further. Okay. It's still a little unsettling though. I'm used to having, experiencing packet loss, you know, when you get out pretty far. Yeah. And I'm not sure if it's the packet loss or, or the, the lag that I'm feeling, but it does, it's, I'm not super comfortable out far. No. So it's, it's, it's not only laggy, but it feels like it might be having a little bit, little dropouts. It could be, but I'm not sure if that's just the lag or... Mm -hmm. Or what I'm feeling. Now, I'm still getting full bars out here. I did drop one bar a little bit. Okay, there, and now I'm at, I dropped two. I'm going to come back. Are you flying low? Are you flying I'm out? pretty high. I'm yeah. probably oh, I see you. 300 I see you. feet. Even trying to fly low like this, coming by us, it's a little bit tough. Yeah. You've got to plan your lines and make sure you're lined up exactly. I guess that high-def camera comes in handy because... I've flown laggy standard def connections and the branches just appear out of nowhere. Mm -hmm. But at least you'll be able to see the branches and gaps. <laughs> you just can't get of, out of the way in time. Clarity to, to plan them. And I think one benefit a lot of people like to point out with these HD systems is that you don't have to carry a GoPro. But one of the issues I ran into with building this wing is that you, you don't have a lot of space to put everything. As, as the viewers will see, it's pretty cramped in there. Yeah. So I did have to add a bunch of weight to compensate for the lack of a GoPro, which this wing is designed for. So I mm. don't think the weight savings were all that much, if any. And having to add all the weight to get the CG right means that you have less flight time, which is mm -hmm. not ideal. Maybe a little bit towards us. But... You're going to land at FPV, huh? Yeah. Well, that was a pretty decent landing, Sam. That was pretty decent, dude. Well, cool, considering the latency. <laughs> yeah, you just gotta right. get it down on the glide and let it fall. All right, sweet. Let's, let's plug in another battery and test out some other functions. Okay. Tell us what's different about this one, Sam. So in this test, we're gonna try a lower resolution. 
we were in the 960p before and that's the middle setting on these goggles we're going to go down to about 620 680 i think it is and see how the latency feels there okay we should get lower latency at the lower quality yeah 640 by 480 instead of 1280 by 960. actually that was the high resolution apparently. all right ready ready release it a little not straight up. All right, I'm gonna try it again. All right, I'm gonna try it again, see if I can get it right. Go. How's it flying? How's the latency? <laughs> Better. <laughs> Good? Oh god, this, this should be the last flight of this plane. I think that's likely. <laughs> yeah, the latency is better. God. Has it gotten down to like, hmm, that's not bad? Or is it like, mm, it's better, but it's still bad? It's hard to tell what's bad flight characteristics. Uh-huh. And what crashed it. Yeah. Yeah, and I think that's one big drawback of these goggles is they're just hard to deal with. They're big. They're heavy. They don't fit on your head great because you have to clamp them around your head and then fold them down. And that's just, it's really difficult to launch the wing. Like what just happened is we threw it and then I couldn't see it. I couldn't move my head enough to see the plane. Yeah, I, I launched it, it like straight up, which is that's on me because I'm not used to doing wing launches. But it has enough power to push out of it. You just couldn't oh, see it where does. it was going to fly it. Oh, yeah, it's got some oomph. This wing is actually pretty decent if you don't overload it with a bunch of heavy stuff it's not meant to have. It is. And then, and then, uh, you know, launch it with uh, goggles on your face. I'm going to do a low pass and see how the latency feels down low. Yeah, let's try it. Low-ish. Yeah, the latency definitely is improved with this. This is something I'd be comfortable flying with. 640 by 480, but how much worse is the video it's, compared to the high def 960? It's, it's definitely not as good, but I'd still say it's better than analog FPV. Shoot a gap through the pavilion with it. The pavilion? Yeah, do it. All right. Shoot a gap through the pavilion. This one behind us. Let's try some gaps. Are you in the high latency or the low latency? Definitely. All right, back here over where we parked. Just shoot through it. Let's see how, let's push it a little. Now we'll finish, we'll finish wrecking it. I believe in you! <laughs> you did it! <laughs> why did you... Why did you say it's not going to work? Oh, this is worst case scenario. My, I can barely feel my thumbs. <laughs> this plane is not flying well. This is very high latency. I'm going to bring it in and land it. Okay. a good landing pros and cons so pros are you're getting hd video it's really cool you don't have to fool around with you know your goggles and and your radio and everything it's it's a little bit easier i think uh cons are is, is a longer list um, <laughs> the goggles are bulky they're kind of hard to deal with you have to use a buddy cord so you're tethered to your radio right that's a downside um <laughs> And then, of course, in the higher resolution modes, you are getting more latency. Right. But other than that, you're just mounting in yep. uh, a module, a camera, and running SBUS, yep. which is not would too you, bad. Would you use this instead of GoPro? I don't think I would. No, I, I, I still prefer to use my goggles having access to the OSD through iNav or Betaflight. That's a big, that's a big con right there. Mm -hmm. We had to go all the way back to his dorm because neither of us brought a laptop to the field. Uh -huh. And it was refusing to arm, and we didn't know why. Mm -hmm. we'd had a, we'd had an OSD, we could have solved that exactly. without a laptop. So, so when you do have an OSD, you, ha you have access to those warnings, your your data, your voltage, your flight time, a yeah. lot of things you simply just can't get in the goggles. The only reason I knew how long I was flying for is the recording time shown on screen. Mm -hmm. So yeah. You can use, I guess, any transmitter you want. That is a mm -hmm. good thing. Mm -hmm. We're using a Radiolink AT9 mm -hmm. here, but anything mm -hmm. with PPM output on a buddy box 
it can go. This is a re- this is a really cool feature that DJI have put in, mm-hmm. and I commend them for doing it mm-hmm. because the typical DJI mentality you would think would be screw uh-huh. everybody else, just use us. Yeah. So it's really cool that they've put the analog. Mm-hmm. F- this has got an analog. Go watch the review of the goggles RE. Mm-hmm. You can use this as FPV goggles, mm-hmm. mostly for spectating because of the <laughs> latency. But you can. Uh-huh. So, but uh, I think you nailed it though when you said that mm-hmm. for like. If I was going to do like a glider mm-hmm. and go up and just glide for 20 minutes on yeah. the wind, mm-hmm. chasing thermals, mm-hmm. this would be so cool because you could just mm-hmm. feel like you were really up there. Yeah, I think These goggles are for the person that wants to sit back and relax with something big up high in the sky, you know, like a long range quad, a large airplane. It's not for someone that wants to fly around proximity, doing high speed racing. passes low or yeah. racing or anything like that. Even landing, you did a great job, but you're a great pilot. Don't don't <laughs> underestimate this guy. Um, landing is even sketchy with the yes. amount of latency. Yeah, and of course, yeah. many people don't like to land under the goggles. Anyways. That's true, because I mean, as an FPV pilot, I always mm-hmm. just think FPV. But you could just you could just lift them up. Mm-hmm. I saw you flying with one freaking hand. You could just <laughs> whoop and then land line of sight mm-hmm. like normal yeah. pilots do. Mm-hmm. Okay, right. good. Thank you, Sam. Thank you yeah. very much yeah. for the help. No problem. And uh, sorry I broke your plane <laughs> with my bad launch. <laughs> That's going to do it for this video, folks. I'm Joshua Bardwell, Sam Pankratz. Yep. Thank you. Happy flying, everybody.